after I first started studying Teddy Roosevelt and deciding how I was gonna paint him, I decided that traditional American tattoos would be the perfect way to tell his story. There was a specific moment in American history that I love when it comes to tattooing, and that is American traditional. In the early 1900s, the era of Sailor Jerry and Ed Hardy, tattooing was very taboo. But then in 1940, when World War II started and men from 18 to 45 were all drafted and they didn't know if they would come back, so might as well get some ink. It was a powerful time in American history when an entire generation of men marked their bodies as if it would be their last message to the world. The signature style at the time was American traditional, or what we now call American traditional. Another reason why I chose to tattoo Teddy is because of a myth that has circulated for a very long time. Teddy had a chest piece of his family's crest, which as badass as that would be and completely on brand for Teddy Roosevelt, it unfortunately is not true. Uh, there was a political cartoon made of him in 1912. So I think that's where the rumor comes from. I decided if we're gonna go with the rumor, I will go ahead and draft up some really cool tattoos that tell his story. So I hope you enjoy Padded Teddy. Each of my portrait paintings contains symbols that represent important stories from that subject's life. Let's talk about the hidden symbols and stories in the portrait, Tatted Teddy. Nicknamed T.D., he was a sickly, bespectacled child. Homeschooled because of his crippling asthma, his doctors actually prescribed he drink whiskey and smoke cigars. Theodore caught wanderlust as a child. With his parents, he toured Europe, Africa, the Middle East, and beyond. He became enthralled with animals and the outdoors. He acquired the head of a dead seal from a local seafood market and taught himself taxi. He started his own museum of natural history in his little bedroom. As a teen, he became obsessed with overcoming all weakness. One way he trained was boxing. This was the start of his strenuous life concept. He would challenge statesmen and hired help alike to fight him in the ring. He even lost the sight in one of his eyes while in office. While on an unsuccessful bear hunt, the guide found and chained up a helpless bear for Teddy, thinking he would want to add this to his trophies. Roosevelt refused to shoot the poor animal, and this story led to the making of the children's stuffed toy, the teddy bear. Theodore Roosevelt established the National Park Service for our country. While the purpose of nature conservation is noble, it pushed out scores of indigenous people who had occupied that land for hundreds of years. As a young police commissioner in New York, Theodore would tour the streets at night with a flash camera. The photos, once developed, expose corrupt police officers and politicians accepting bribes and in very compromising positions. All right, stick around to learn more. There's so many more stories when it comes to Roosevelt. It is not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again, because there is no effort without error and shortcoming. But who does actually strive to do the deeds? Who knows great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at the best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at the worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly, so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who neither know victory nor defeat. Teddy met his first wife, Alice, while he was at Harvard, and he says that it was love at first sight. He proposed to her on Valentine's Day, and the two married in 1880. Alice and Teddy would live and travel together for four years until Alice suddenly died after she gave birth to their child. She died on Valentine's Day, and Teddy's mother died in the exact same house on the same day of completely unrelated reasons. That night, Teddy wrote in his journal, the light has gone out of my life. After the double funeral, he wrote, for joy or for sorrow, my life has now been lived out. I chose to represent Alice with the image of Lady Liberty. The year after Alice died, the United States was gifted the Statue of Liberty and it came to live where Teddy would be able to see it every day while he lived in New York. After the death of his wife, Teddy took his misery out west. He went to the Dakotas and buried himself in the hard work of that lifestyle. He was out there for two years until he eventually reunited with a childhood friend, Edith Carroll, who became his second wife. I used a lighthouse to represent Edith because she was the light that brought him home from the Wild West. They married and Edith raised Alice as her own and then had five more children with Teddy Roosevelt. 
Edith's presence in Roosevelt's life brought him happiness and stability. She played a crucial role in shaping his presidency and offered unwavering support and companionship throughout their marriage. He once said of Edith, she is my whole world, reflecting on the deep bond that they shared together.